Hey, uh, Mike Cole is a very valuable colleague at City Council and has uh, a lot of different things he fights for. And the same could be said of Marco Mendicini. He obviously has broader responsibilities as a federal minister, but he's the MP for this area. He never stops caring about this community and about Lawrence Heights and about Little Jamaica. Uh, but he also cares about something that's very important to me. I mean, this city's going to get back on its feet and it's going to thrive again because we're able to reopen our borders to have people come from all over the world to live here, to choose Toronto, to, f to form their lives and to, ha to have a new life for themselves. And that's the policy area that he's responsible for. And I'm so much looking forward to the day uh, when that happens. And his government, uh, I've said before, I've said, the day they stop being a good partner for, for Toronto, you'll hear from me on that, because that's my job. But for now, they've been very good partners, and that's been consistent on transit and housing. Just this week, uh, yesterday or the day before, we announced a wonderful new program funded by ourselves and the federal government to uh, train 5,000 people who are underrepresented in the tech sector, because people who are from black or indigenous or uh, you know, backgrounds like that are seriously underrepresented in the tech sector that is thriving and booming, and there are thousands of jobs still being created even now. So this program is going to train 5,000 people to allow them to take advantage of the opportunity that is Toronto. And that's something that we're doing in partnership with the federal government. And Marco has been very much involved in all of those things. Um, before I talk a little bit about the Allen, I'm not going to talk too long. You'll be very thrilled to know. I want to just say two other things, because every time I get the chance, I do. Please turn to someone that you know, someone that is rel a relative of yours, a co-worker, a friend, a neighbor, and convince them if they haven't been to get vaccinated. You know, we've done the first 70%, and it's a remarkable milestone, but we can't declare victory. We cannot declare victory. Not even close, not even, you haven't heard me say a word about that. We've said they're milestones, but they are not the finish line. The finish line is as close to 100% as you can get. And there's a lot of people who need just a little bit of persuasion or a little bit of support in getting registered for an appointment or a little bit of support in getting a ride uh, to the vaccine clinic. We, we provide a lot of these services, but oftentimes it's going to be someone they trust or know that is going to help them to get there to get vaccinated. And so uh, please, if you can make an effort to do that, and if you're able to do it yourself, please go and get vaccinated. There are 66 clinics operating this weekend across the city, and uh, we hope people will take advantage of them. The second thing I want to say is, it's a very hot day today, and we, we uh, wait for this weather uh, all year. But when it's hot, there are people, including seniors, but not limited to seniors, who have a bit of trouble uh, with you know, dehydration and with just their health sometimes. And I hope that you'll keep an eye on them. And we, as a city, have opened a number of cooling centers across the city. They're mostly in the civic centers, but they're in other locations. And the locations are all to be found at toronto.ca slash keep cool. Um, but if you can make sure, again, that you look in on someone who might be struggling a little bit with the heat, and just make sure they're okay, because it's those days we do yearn for, but on the other hand, uh, it does pose a risk to some people who are a bit old. Now, to be here today, uh, I can tell you, is, is a special occasion because it's the first time we've taken the active TO program right out of the downtown of the city, and it's something I very much wanted to do this year, and we'll do it again over the summer and other places. Um, but it's also, and I want to thank the residents of the Eglinton Lawrence community. It's a great community, and it really is, like many across the city, a real community where people stick together and they fight together for things they believe in, they support each other. Um, and so that allowed us to close with your support, the northbound lanes of the Allen Road. And I should say to anybody who's watching on television, uh, you can't access it from the south because Eglinton is under construction with a great new transit line that's going to open soon. Um, so you have to access it from the north, um, but that just means off Lawrence Avenue. So the subway comes right to Lawrence and the Allen Road. Uh, there are other ways to get here, of course. Uh, you can cycle here for that matter as well. But I want you to know why it's also an important day to be doing this, uh, this celebration on this day in this place. 50 years ago today, um, a man who is, who is um, he's like a second father to me, he's my political mentor. Um, I had the, the privilege of serving him at Queen's Park when he was Premier. Premier Bill Davis, 50 years ago today, cancelled the Spadina Expressway. And you know, there are still people out there who disagree with that decision. But what he said uh, was, and I think if you listen to these words spoken 50 years ago today, not 50 days or 50 weeks ago, 50 years ago, this is what he said on that day. And I quote, if we are building a transportation system to serve the automobile, the Spadina Expressway would be a good place to start. But if we're building a transportation system to serve people, the Spadina Expressway is a good place to stop. Good. And imagine those words being spoken 50 years ago. And we've made progress since then. In fact, on part of the place where there might have been more lanes of traffic today, you have a subway running right down the middle of what was to be the Spadina Expressway. But think about this for a minute. The expressway which was stopped, and it's not ideal that it stops just in a sudden spot at Eglinton Avenue, but where it was to go from there 
was through the Cedarvale Ravine. Many of you uh, being cyclists and walkers and people who are out and about have probably walked or cycled through the Cedarvale, Cedarvale Ravine, one of the most beautiful parts of our city. It was going to have an expressway running through it. Then after it got through the Cedarvale Ravine, it was going to get to the Annex, wow. a treasured neighborhood containing many heritage homes, a stable neighborhood close to the downtown of one of the biggest cities in North America. It would have been destroyed by an expressway going through all the way down to the Gardner. And yes, it would have been perhaps easier for, for cars and trucks to get from the 401 uh, to uh, downtown. But I think the right decision was made at that time. And so when Mike Cole made the suggestion, I thought it was so fitting that on this anniversary that we should commemorate a decision that was very far-sighted. My phone for your day was this morning. He's going to be 92 years old in a month. Uh, now, I, I was a bit unfair with him in that I gave him a test. And I said, do you remember what you were doing 50 years ago today? He didn't, and I mean, who would? But I said to him, well, you were canceling the Spadina Expressway 50 years ago today, and we're celebrating that decision today and saying what a far-sighted decision that it was and how much it's contributed to city building in the city and to a change of attitude, a change of approach that says, yes, we still have to get cars and trucks around the city and transit vehicles that are on the roads, but we have to do it in a balanced way that also takes into account the needs of others uh, that, uh, that have other ways of getting around and just the need of building a good quality of life in this city. So I want to take the opportunity, I'm very biased, and I said to that, to pay tribute to Premier Davies on the stage for that part of the presentation paper.